Hello everyone. So I hope you can hear me and you can see me. Let me do something here real quick. Yep. So hello everyone again. My name is Marina and I am a new locally to the locally team and I'm very happy uh, to be a part of this wonderful fantastic team. Um, so as I said, my name is Marina and uh, I'm originally from Russia, but currently I'm living in the United States, in Washington DC. Well, to be precise, I live uh, in a suburban town. It's small and very cozy. It's called Tacoma Park, uh, but uh, it's 10-15 minutes from Washington DC by car. So it's really close to Washington DC and yeah, that's why I'm here right now. So today I'm going to walk you around this city, the capital of the United States, and uh, I'll walk you along the street called Massachusetts Avenue, um, in, and it is also known as uh, the Embassy Road, and well, you'll see why it is called the Embassy Road. So um, again, for those who join us right now, my name is Marina, and I'll walk you around Washington DC today. So uh, we are um, in the middle of the uh, Massachusetts Ave right now and the first thing I'm going to show you today is this. No, not me, this. <laughs> so um, this is called the Islamic Center of Washington DC and at the same time it is a, uh, an active mosque. It's very big and very, very beautiful as you see. So it was built in the middle of the 20th century and uh, at that moment, it, it was the biggest, the largest um, mosque uh, in the Western Hemisphere. Yeah, so it's really impressive, actually. I, I'm not sure if you guys see how huge it is, but it is very huge. And um, if you come closer, you can see the ornaments and uh, very beautiful architecture, very authentic. Um, it's cool, it's very beautiful. And there, uh, uh, there is a peach tree and there are actually even real peaches on this tree, but you guys can't see them, but that's fine. So, uh, a few words about the street um, and about the area this street is located uh, on. So, um, the area, the district uh, I'm in right now is called Dupont Circle and um, it is a historic district uh, but it was not very very well developed um, before the second world war after the second world war uh, i'm sorry not the second not the world war the um the civil war the civil war the american civil war and uh, after that um, the freed slave uh, slaves needed a place to live and this uh, particular area, it uh, started being developed. Um, oh, by the way, we are right now, we are uh, at one spot. It is called, uh, well, if you see this thing, which is kind of strange and unusual, it is called a coal, coal box. So uh, these things, uh, they were real coal boxes. There were uh, telephones installed there. And if something, something happens, some emergency situation like fire or, um, you know, attack on the street, people could come here and call the police or uh, firefighters. Uh, usually, if you see these kind of things, the call boxes around the city, you'll see them, um, you know, naked, without telephones installed anymore. They're just standing like this. There is nothing like... Uh, you know, like this small piece of art inside. But in this district, in Dupont Circle district, they um, renovate them and make them little pieces of art. So this one, uh, there is usually something written uh, at the back. Uh, this one is called Diplomacy. And um, it's not surprising that it, it's located right here uh, at the beginning of the embassy row. Uh, because uh, there are about 55 embassies on this street and around 50 uh, in the nearest districts. 
such as uh, Kalarama district and well the thing is that this place is unique because there are so many um, so many embassies here yeah I'll cross the road real fast by the way one of the things that I was surprised with in the United States are the um, traffic lights because they're so different from Russian yeah and this is the mosque um, so uh, what else I can tell you about this uh, this street about the embassy road, about the Massachusetts Ave uh, it it was not originally designed to you know to locate embassies there um, oh we are passing the embassy of India right now by the way yeah you see wonderful elephants here um, so uh, it just it, it was a very very rich uh, area where people built their mansions their uh, great big houses uh, but uh, after the Great Depression that happened uh, the first quarter of the 20th century people had to sell their mansions and houses because they could not afford them anymore oh this is the yeah this is the embassy of Japan well it's actually uh, not the embassy itself it's the chancery yeah it looks pretty simple but I can tell you that it's not very usual thing to have you know something built on this street it's very um, it's a privilege to have something here <laughs> yeah so uh, and in the middle of the 20th century um, the United States government started to relocate embassies um, to this road and uh, present uh, the embassies of different countries um, these great mansions very rich beautiful houses with wonderful architecture yeah so let's see what kind of embassy it is and this is the embassy of well there is no flag so uh, actually every time we can we'll, we'll see any embassy I'll ask you what embassy do you think it is because there are flags usually uh, on them and you'll have you know a hint what embassy it is but this is the embassy of Japan and it doesn't have any flag right now oh wow somebody asked me why I crossed <laughs> why I crossed their territory oh 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 I hope nobody will punish me for that yeah but interestingly enough other than you know millions of embassies being located there this street is pretty ordinary and um, you'll see that apart from embassies there are just rich houses located there so there are still people who can afford by buying a house among the embassies and it's pretty cool I think pretty fantastic yeah uh, there are a lot of pieces of architecture here um, that are valuable just uh, on their own rights uh, because they're just very beautiful and you know historic so uh, but as I said this street is quite ordinary and <laughs> right now <laughs> there are people um, working here and I hope you guys can hear me pretty well because I can't even hear myself because of this work um, road work yeah okay this is the cultural center of Korea of um, South Korea and this is the guy who can't give me who doesn't allow me to speak properly <laughs> and hear what I'm saying <laughs> all right okay so we're looking at another embassy which is hiding behind the trees wait a second I'll I'll come closer and again there is no flag here but I'll show you I'll show you the the architecture 
maybe you'll you know you'll guess what it is by the architecture because it's very typical it's very typical maybe I am just I'm used to it because I see it a lot in the United States but yeah it's an uh, it's the type of architecture typ typical of uh, Latin American countries and this is the uh, Estados you, you see Estados Unidos Mexicanos so uh, this is the uh, embassy of, um, of Mexico um, on the other side you can see the embassy of Zambia but it is now being renovated so there is um, at the moment there is nothing really really you know exciting about it because you can see anything because it's being renovated yeah and yeah i recommend you just enjoying the um, the architecture this is not an embassy this is just you know someone's house okay and what can we see here Oh, this is definitely an embassy. Uh, this one looks uh, pretty modern and it's most likely that it has been built, it has been recently built. And yep, let's see, it's the Embassy of Republic of Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, beautiful. Um, and there is, the <laughs> there is their flag, but you can't really see it because uh, surprisingly enough, the weather today is very, very nice, very calm, cloudy, and I was prepared to <laughs> to sweat a lot because uh, it has been really, really hot recently in Washington D.C. But now it's very, uh, it's, it's quite chill, I would say, and it's very nice. Okay, another flag that you can't see. That's why I can't ask you <laughs> what embassy it is. I can't ask you to guess, but, well, if you can see, it's the uh, embassy of the Republic of Malawi. And uh, as you see, these embassies are not, like, huge or um, representative of the countries uh, they are the embassies of, but uh, they are just the mansions that used to, be, it used to belong to very rich and wealthy and people this is another embassy of united arab emirates and you can't actually tell that it is it is the embassy of ua uh, uae but it is it is it looks very modest uh, on the outside oh there is just this wonderful building uh, and this is another embassy. Very beautiful. Okay, I'll try to walk a little bit faster actually because we have so so much to see and it's already been 10 minutes of our work, of our walk and I'm really worried that I won't be able to show you everything I want to show you. So yeah um i didn't want to walk around the mall i'm pretty sure that uh anyone who watches this um online tour knows what um the capital mall is yeah just check out this this architecture so I didn't actually want uh, to walk uh, you around the mall because the mall is the most popular place in the United States. I mean, in Washington DC at least, maybe not in the United States in general, but in Washington DC. Yeah, just look at this. This is fantastically beautiful architecture. I don't know, this is what Washington DC about for me because it's not just about monumenting, it's not just about you know, the monument to Lincoln and to Washington and to Jefferson. It's about these streets that are not so huge, not so popular, but are still very, very unique and very beautiful. That's why I decided to call to show you the DuPont Circle. Um, as you see, we 
have started with the embassy row, but then I'll lead you to a place, uh, well, basically to the DuPont circle itself. It's a circle, it's a road, um, and uh, there are a lot of nice local, you know, small businesses located there. Um, it's very cozy and uh, the, DuPont, the DuPont circle itself is a popular place uh, for gathering, for some, you know, for the youth, for young adults, for just for people to have some time together. Okay, uh, you can see the uh, flag here, uh, not the one from the European Union, uh, the other one striped uh, white and blue. What do you think? What embassy is it? What do you think? I'll give you an answer just in a couple of minutes, maybe in a minute, <laughs> before you forget what I have asked. <laughs> yeah, so um, this is uh, this is the uh, one of the circles uh, on uh, located on this road. So, so uh, the Massachusetts road uh, has a few circles like that, and the Dupont circle, the circle we are actually uh, heading towards um it's big and it's the main you know the main circle on the street but this one is called uh the sheridan circle and uh oh this is the uh the embassy of uh <sighs> south korea oh yeah you can see the flag here i should have asked you by the way uh the flag the embassy with the flag with the striped blue and white flag i showed you it was the embassy of greece uh, there is another embassy and their flag is red and white. I am not sure. Yeah, it's very difficult to see. It's uh, the embassy of Latvia. Um, so this circle is called the Sheridan Circle because if you see the monument uh, in the center, uh, it's the monument to Admiral um, Sheridan, who uh, was one of the admirals during the Civil War. Yeah. Uh, this is the monument to... Uh, there are a lot of monuments on, on the street, small and big ones. This one is, you know, medium-sized. It's like a real-sized person. And this is the monument to Mustafa Kemal. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. I can't read Turkish, but it's Ataturk, probably. So this is the first president of Turkey. Very uh, famous person. And if you see there, there is another call box located right next to the embassy of Romania. Um, this call box, we'll see, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's another picture. Uh, by the way, today we'll see not only pictures in these call boxes. So uh, this picture is... Um, dedicated to Mrs. Lars Anderson. And uh, on this road, on Massachusetts uh, Avenue, there is a place called uh, the Anderson House. So maybe we'll see it today. So let me go here. We'll, uh, we'll now uh, go away from Massachusetts Avenue for a while. And uh, I'm actually you know, I'm a Russian person, so <laughs> when I moved to the United States, uh, I started looking for the places that reminded me of Russia or, you know, or about some, or what, about my Slavic roots in general. So um, I found, uh, found out that in Washington DC there is a monument to Taras Shevchenko, who is a Ukrainian poet and uh, a person who fought for freedom and liberty of, um, of Ukraine. So uh, we are going to see his monument in a couple of minutes. But before we see it, uh, I recommend you to look around. So we uh, turned uh, right from Massachusetts Avenue and we can now see regular houses of the people who live in Washington DC. And I, ad I just adore these houses uh, for the architecture, for their coziness. Um, there is a lot of, there are a lot of trees and a lot of green 
bushes and flowers, which I really, really love about uh, these, you know, cozy districts without huge uh, apartment buildings. Yeah, I think it's very beautiful and very cozy. By the way, um, I um, visited New York a couple of times as well. And uh, these kind of houses remind me of New York a lot because uh, on such streets as on the streets close to that located close to uh, Central Park, for example, there are a lot of houses like that. By the way, the uh, the road we are uh, walking right now is called Q Road. And <laughs> I was uh, really, you know, um, surprised to know that some roads, not some, so many roads in the United States, in the United States in general, and in Washington DC in particular, are called something like Q Road or 22nd Street or whatever. Okay, should I cross the road on the red light? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Okay, let me wait here for a minute. Yeah, I don't want you guys to lose time just watching me crossing the road, but I don't want to break the rules as well. <laughs> so, yeah, red light, like this. No, no way. You shouldn't go. Okay. And <laughs> instead of a green light, there is a white person. <laughs> well, at least for, you know, for pedestrians, not for the drivers. For the drivers, they have regular green light so uh, the monument we are going to see in a couple of minutes um, is as I said dedicated to Taras Shevchenko but apart from the monument there is a very 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 beautiful church here it's in a gothic style and um, uh, it is located Mm. Uh, on my right, I'll show it to you just in a minute. I wish I could walk faster. Maybe I can. Okay. Yeah, so here is the church. You, you can see it right now. Yeah, it's very beautiful. It's very beautiful. All are welcome. So the rainbow flag, the rain rainbow flag here, because all are welcome in the United States and uh, Pilgrims Gallery. So it's not just a church. There is also a gallery, and the church is, is called the Pilgrims, um, the pil uh, the the Church of the Pilgrims. Yeah, here it is. Oh. Thank God for this weather. The weather is just fantastic today. It's perfect for uh, walking and showing the stuff to you guys because uh, if it would be you know really really sunny it would uh, uh, if it were really sunny it would be very difficult to show you something so here it is the Gas Shevchenko monument it's quite huge I would say and it's you know, it's not very popular of the United States to install something dedicated to Russia or Ukraine, but here it is, and it's beautiful. Takas Shevchenko, 1814-1861, Bart of Ukraine. Interestingly enough, they called him a Bart, they don't call him a poet. And you can enjoy the view if I go somewhere here and show you it like this. So you can see him and this wonderful, beautiful church here. Yeah, and they decided to install the monument to him because, uh, as I said, he was a fighter for freedom and liberty of his own country. And you can imagine the United States is uh, very, you know, concerned about the rights of people, the right to be free and uh, the right to be liberated as the United States actually started as the country who fought that fought for their liberty from Great Britain. Yeah. 
Okay, so the next thing we are going to see today is the house to pres of President Woodrow Wilson. And if you don't know who Woodrow Wilson is, I recommend you to Google it. He was one of the presidents of the United States. What is your guess? Do you think, when do you think he was a president? I'll give you a minute to think and to guess, maybe even know some facts about him. So he was a, oh, he was a president uh, during the First World War in the United States. So he reigned from, not reigned, I'm sorry, he wasn't a, an emperor, tsar, you know. So he was a president from 1913 till, I don't remember the year, but you can Google it. And um, his house, well, you'll see, I'll, I'll not tell you anything about his house until we are there. Okay. Oh, I hear birds singing. Beautiful. Oh, there is another embassy. And the flag, you don't probably see the flag. Um, the flag is blue, black, and white. So at the top of the flag, there is blue color. Then there is a black, uh, black line. Then there is there is a white stripe, and it is the flag of yes, Estonia. Yes. And here is another call box. Uh, I'll not tell you what this box is about. The thing is that the, the main point I wanted to make isn't about, you know, what these call boxes are about. And the, the point is that uh, someone decided to renovate them and make them little pieces of art, which I'm really, you know, happy about. Um, here are some other embassies. <sighs> Let's see. So, do you recognize this flag? Yeah, I know, it's kind of difficult to see. This is the Embassy of Paraguay. You know what? Just a few days ago, I was walking here with my friends. And one of my friends, she usually um, spends her time, free time, uh, just playing on her uh, app, um, in her app, in her telephone. And this app is about geography. So she knows all the flags just like this you know and every time we were heading towards some embassy she knew what embassy it is because <laughs> oh my because she know she knows the flags another monument okay so we are back to sheridan's circle and we are heading towards Woodrow Wilson house. Oh, it's so peaceful here. Oh, I'm a silver minion. Nice. Oh, I'm sorry for that. I hope you guys didn't lose me. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Everything is fine. Okay. So what is this? By the way, you can see the flag pretty much distinctly. What do you think? This flag? Uh, this um, of which country? 
this part is and this is the Philippines the embassy of Philippines oh you can even see me here <laughs> I just enjoy walking here it is very beautiful very peaceful Someone is renovating one of these buildings here. Okay, this is the embassy of the Republic of Chile. And here is another flag. And this is the embassy of the Republic of Haiti. Well, believe me or not, I didn't know that Haiti is a republic. I'm ignorant. I'm very ignorant. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Whew. I'm actually really, really, really hot. I told you that the weather was fine. And the weather was fine. The weather is fine, I mean, but it's just when you walk really fast, you know, and I try to walk fast, believe me. <laughs> It's very difficult Ooh, to stay cold. And some, some people are even jogging right now. Even though it's like the middle of the day, it's very hot. I can't imagine, can't imagine myself oh, running right now. It would be impossible, I think. Okay. There is another embassy and the flag isn't, you know, very clearly seen. This is the embassy, oh, of Hrvatia, Croatia, I think, it's Croatia in English. Uh, Saint Jerome the priest, creator's doctor of the church. I honestly don't know who this guy is, but the monument is nice. Okay. And we are turning right because it is where the president's house is. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not going to show you the most uh, popular president's house today, but actually, the White House is located very, very close to where we are right now. When we come to the Dupont Circle, one of the streets, it's called the Connected, the Connected uh, Connecticut Avenue. Uh, it leads right uh, to the White House. Yeah, so we are turning right here, and we are very close to President Woodrow Wilson House. So what I wanted to tell you about this house is one simple fact: this house doesn't look like a President's house. It's yeah, maybe it's because all the place, all the houses on this street are very, very beautiful and, you know, grand, mm, splendorous. This one looks modest in comparison with them. But it was the house of um, one of, you know, I wouldn't say the most famous, but still, Woodrow Wilson is someone whose name you know. And believe me, there are a lot of presidents, there were a lot of presidents in the United States whose names you don't know. So, here it is. Here is his house. Uh, yeah, I understand. It's a three, you know, three-story building. It's still very huge and I believe inside it's very beautiful. Uh, there is some story of the United States. Oh, by the way, do you know why Washington DC is called... Um, uh, DC, this is Columbia. So Columbia is actually this uh, statue of the women, of the woman who carries the torch in her hand. And her name is Columbia. And she represents, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's a symbol of, you know, it's a, uh, it comes from Greek, uh, from Greece and Rome, and it represents liberty and freedom. And that's why 
Columbia is the initial, you know, name for this area, for this for this territory where we are right now. Because, you know, United States is all about freedom and liberty. So here is the street where President Woodrow Wilson lived, and now it's really mixed with regular, quite regular, I would say, houses where regular residents live. Oh, this is another, another, oh, you can see the flock really well. Oh, no, you can't. Yes, you can. Uh, this is the embassy of Myanmar. Um, on the left, there is, you can't really see it, there is a park. Uh, it's, you know, it's really difficult to call, the, to call it a park. In my understanding, just some green, you know, area, territory with oh, another embassy. And I'm not sure if you see the flag, but if you see this blue symbol here, blue and golden, you can guess that it's the embassy of I I Ireland. <sighs> yeah. So this green area uh, is, is, you know, designed for people to have some rest, to go outside their houses and to spend some time breathing fresh air and talking to people and it you know it is extremely popular right now during coronavirus because it's you know people try to practice social distancing and they can't actually invite anyone to their own places they try to go outside and to gather at some you know open air space and uh, these little oases, you know, little green areas uh, designed all over Washington DC, actually. Uh, these areas help people to stay sane during these times because it's quite difficult to, you know, not to speak to anyone, not to see anyone, not to share your feelings with anyone, so on and so forth. Okay. This is another wonderful, beautiful house. I'm not sure if it's, it, it's most likely it's not the embassy because I don't see any flags here. Yeah. There is just a regular house. People just living there. And now we are going to turn right. Uh, and we are going to see something that actually reminded me of Russia a lot. So, this place is called Spanish Steps. Uh, it was designed to copy, uh, you know, to imitate uh, Roman architecture, uh, Italian architecture. So, Spanish Steps. But it actually reminds me of uh, Russian parks. So every central park in Russia would have some kind of place like this. We'll just... Yeah, we'll just have a look at it. It's very nice. It's very refreshing to have something like that in the center of the city. Yep. And uh, in every Russian park, central park, there is usually something like that, some place like that. Um, it looks like this. Um, it's very nice, very beautiful, very calm, um, and it's very chill. When when you when when you're next to water, it feels very refreshing, you know. Uh, these steps usually uh, actually led to a Colorama mansion, so there was a huge mansion there. Um, Colorama is actually a district that is located um, near Dupont Circle. <clears throat> it's a historic district as well. And there are a few, not a few, there are a couple of dozens of embassies there as well. Um, yeah. Um, so these are the last two call boxes I'm going to show you today. And I promised you that we will see something different from uh, just paintings. And this is small sculptures. So I believe this is how firefighters looked uh, back there. 
because this guy is definitely a firefighter and that is why he is installed here in the coal box so there is uh, the map of these coal boxes uh, scattered all over you know the uh, the district the Dupont circle here is by the way the Dupont circle so no this is the Sheridan circle and this is the Dupont circle this is where we are going and the other one is located right here this is probably you know just a person who is calling the police or someone so i just love this nice you know um nice things nice small elements of culture of the united states uh let's say i i have never thought that there were such things as um call boxes somewhere in the world <laughs> and now i do i know i know that there are okay i'm running 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 to another street we are going to uh we are going to turn on q street and see you know it's very very close to our final destination I hope you guys not tired of um, walking with me and oh look at this Demeter Peshev Plaza interestingly uh, I don't know who Demeter Peshev is but it sounds Slavic maybe Polish <laughs> okay there is another embassy here by the way oh and this is the embassy of Bulgaria and I even see some Cyrillic letters uh, on the plaque here yeah this is the embassy of Bulgaria oh this is just a very beautiful house and this one and this one I love them I I've seen them a couple of times when I walked here before and what I also like about uh, this kind of district is that you can always you know see some kind of small road and when you walk here you can see something like that you know very unusual unusual places uh, unusual architecture oh this is the embassy of estonia we can we actually saw it uh before yep let's see what else is there so we are going to oh, to turn the the key straight okay i hope nobody's going to hit me i'll just cross the road here <laughs> running 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 okay cool i'm fine Yeah, so Dupont Circle is a historic circle and we are back on Massachusetts Street but we'll be off it very soon. By the way, I'm not wearing mask today. I mean not today, right now. First off, there are not so many people here. Second of all, it's very hot to walk in the mask and when I walk outside I you know I usually try to take it off but not when I'm in very crowded place of course and okay just take a look at this this actually looks like a small castle <laughs> it's a mansion so it's a it's called a cosmos club um, but if you google it uh, it used to be if I'm not mistaken <laughs> it's called the Everett house now because uh, a person named Everett, a very some kind of influential person in the United States lived there. And there is another small castle. Very beautiful. The Society of the Cincinnati. Uh, but it is called um, it is also called called the Townsend House because uh, a person called uh, Townsend lived there. So as you see, a lot of places that are now embassies or. Uh, are somehow connected to um, other countries they have a second name 
uh, because usually they used to be the mansions, the mansions of very uh, influential people. Cool. So I wanted, this is the embassy of, do you see the flag? Which embassy is it? <laughs> the flag of uh, India and the embassy of India. Uh, I wanted to, um, to show you, to walk you around the Q Street as well, because um, as opposed to Massachusetts Street, this one is very, you know, narrow, very local, and uh, it's mostly, you know, regular people living here. Though the uh, prices on real estate would be really, really expensive there, here, ridiculously high, because, well, just because it's, you know, DuPont Circle, the Massachusetts Street, the Embassy Road. So, I love this. You see the stairs, these emergency stairs? I love those things. Uh, it's very popular in, not only in uh, Washington DC, all over the United States and in New York in particular. So, um, when I was walking here a few days ago, I accidentally turned on this street. And I was so, so, so surprised that it's so cozy <laughs> and nice. I, I'd say that one day, if I live in Washington DC, I'm not sure, I, I, you know, Washington DC is not the place I want to live in. Uh, just because it's huge, it's too hasty for me. Uh, oh, wow, look at that. So, okay. Another thing I was really surprised when I came to the United States is that people give so much stuff for free. So, there are these books here. They just stay standing here and no one is here. It means that just take the book and go, you know. A lot of books here, just for free. And it's fantastic for people like me because I adore reading. And, you know, reading in English helps uh, with English a lot. Yeah. Uh, this is my favorite house on the street, for real. And just because it looks like this. So, if there was a place in Washington DC where I would love to live, it's this uh, district and probably this house, just because of this balcony here, <laughs> because of the trees. It's very cozy, very nice. Yep. I just love this district. Um, yeah. Oh, here is a small gallery. Small gallery here. And this house kind of matches the color of the flowers living, uh, growing here. So, when I think about Washington DC, I think about streets, streets like this. I don't think about the monuments, I don't think about White House. I think about these cozy streets, because that's what Washington DC is mostly, mostly about. Uh, but we are, uh, we are actually getting as close to DuPont Circle as we can. We are almost, almost there. Oh, I can go now. Please don't hit me. Cool. So, there is a place I wanted to show you, but <laughs> the problem is right now it's being renovated. And, well, um, it is the entrance to... Let me go there, actually. It is the entrance to DuPont Circle uh, metro station. And unfortunately, I can't show you in its whole beauty because of renovation. But the thing is that there is this uh, beautiful phrase written um, around. There is the title of our station. And there are actually, no, I won't be able to do that. Uh, there are actually flowers growing all over around and I really love this place because what is you know metro in the United States sucks I'm sorry to tell you that but uh, as a person from Russia where metro is you know it's a unique unique architecture Okay, can you hear me? Cool, 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 I'm sorry. This is probably because I tried to enter the metro. So I was telling you that metro in the United States 
isn't fantastic, <laughs> as you can see. Um, in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, metro is something you have to dedicate a few hours to. You know, you have to go down and travel around the map and see what stations there are because they're so, so, so ridiculously beautiful. In the United States, you won't see these kind of station, metro stations at all. Well, but uh, there are some of them. For example, I'm sorry. Uh, in the center of Washington, there is a station called the Union Station. It is beautiful. It is a mix of metro station, bus station, and uh, railway station. And this place is actually very impressive too when you look at it uh, from the top and when it is not renovated. You can even see sunflowers here. And sunflowers again remind me of Russia, of my hometown, which is Rostov on Don. Yeah. So this is the DuPont Circle metro station. This is where you will come if you go to see this place once in your life and we are now heading towards the oh the Dupont circle itself so you can see some tents here a very popular thing in the United States it's the tram tramps uh, tram stands camps uh, so people who ha doesn't have anywhere to live, they basically live outside in the tents and are helped by society in some way. So before we see the Dupont circle itself, the, you know, the road to the circle itself, I will show you this small place. It's called Kramer Books and afterwards Cafe. So it's a very old not really very very old but still it's uh it's a local business they are 60 years old and they uh, it's a bookstore and a cafe at one and they draw what i really love about them they're very customized you know uh for example you can see the drawings on their bags paper bags they do these drawings themselves and here is the russian bag yeah so they're very nice. There are some very nice local businesses here, as I told you. Let me see if I... Okay, there is not the space. So maybe I can... No, I can't. Okay, no, no mind. And the very last thing I'm going to show you is the Dupont Circle itself. So, there is a Starbucks, by the way. Uh, speaking about Starbucks yes, in Russia, or well, in the United States, people do not really like Starbucks. Uh, both because it's very, you know, it's a popular coffee network, and uh, the coffee here is just all right. Uh, some people, there are no a lot of, you know, coffee foodies in the United States. But still, uh, some people know what you know good coffee should be like, and that's why they don't like to go to Starbucks uh, and try to find something else. But the second reason is because it's a very big company uh, that violates some, you know, general uh, etiquette. I don't know how to say it. Rules of behavior. So people do not like big corporations in the United States. I mean, regular people. So this is the circle. It's quite big. And as I said, it's green and it's a popular place for gathering for people. And unfortunately, the, um, oh, the fountain in the center of the circle isn't working right now. Uh, but it is very beautiful as well. But this place is fantastic in the evening when it's not really hot, uh, when there are a lot of people sitting on these benches, talking. You know, there are some mu there is some music sometimes. It's like a small small park in the center of the district. And when this fountain is on, 
it you know it refreshes everything it makes the atmosphere really calm with this water with the sounds of water and uh, the temperature gets lower here because the water is cool so basically that's it that's my trip around to Pond Circle for today uh, thanks for staying with me thanks for walking around this fantastic fantastic uh, area and um, I recommend you to stay with us stay with locally sign up for our feed uh, look at our posts uh, and news and I'll be waiting for anyone who come to Washington DC to join me and walk around thank you so so much bye